Hello and welcome back, my friends, far and wide. Good to see all of you. Good to hear all of you. And hopefully it's good of you to hear us again. Thank you for joining us here at Some Low Grade Gamers. We are on episode eight this week. Some Low Grade Gamers consists of myself, Mr. Tom from Some Kind of Gaming, the other half of Some Kind of Gaming. Laura. That's her. That's me. (laughs) Hello, Laura. How are we this week? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you for asking. And of course, the low-grade gamer himself, as always, Mr. Dan. How are you doing, Dan? Good. Good, guys. I've also got our mascot, Phil Spencer, here. I noticed you've been uh, playing around with that little guy all throughout our pre-podcast chats. We've got a guy too. Oh, look, we've got a little guy. This is Snowman. Everybody's got a mascot. His (laughs) name is Mr. Snowman. He's representative of our best friend anyway. (laughs) Uh, Nice. So what's new this week, everybody? Laura, let's start with you. What have you been playing this week? What, What is going on in the world of Laura's video games? Well, in the world of Laura's video games, it's currently featuring Metroid Dread. Lovely. Still working away at that. Still plugging away. I kind of had stopped playing it for a bit because after I bought it and I was playing it initially, Tom started playing it. So then we couldn't play it at the same time. And then I kind of started playing other things. But since we did our best games of 2021 video, I was reinvigorated. Mm-hmm. It so, is definitely one of the best games of 2021. Yep. I think I'm almost done. Nice. I've got the double jump. So it's not a long game, but it is definitely a hard game. Yes. Yeah. How are you finding it? It's some that? tough, tough yakka. <laughs> yeah. But it's all just like you just have to, all the boss fights and stuff, you know, you've just got to learn the patterns. It's yeah. just learning the patterns, dying a million times, learning the patterns, and then. And then you end up beating the boss and you're just like, oh. Yeah, it's a bigger accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes you've just got to, like, you can't be put down by the fact you die a lot. I used to just let the Emmys, like, get to me. Like, that noise and just the tension mm. in the Emmy zones, like, I would become stressed. My <laughs> heart rate would just go through the roof. I was like, this is bad for my cholesterol probably. <laughs> But I've I've since you know and you, now I die in the Emmy zone and I'm like oh what's new yeah, another yeah new. but I've also been playing um for, as a bedtime game because as I just mentioned um, my heart rate goes through the roof when I play <laughs> Metroid Dread so when I'm winding down I like a cozier game and I've been playing um this new RPG called Witchwood okay yeah, I've heard yeah. Of it's you? good it's good I'm almost finished that too. Uh, what what type of game is Witchwood? I remember asking you a couple of days, like when you first started playing it and you weren't quite sure yet. Yeah, well, I thought it was going to be like a farming sim or something at yep. first, but it's not. It's an, it's an RPG. I seem to always make that mistake. I see a cute game and I'm like, oh, it's probably a farming sim. And then it's like not. But there's no combat or anything. It's like quest okay. based in crafting. You've got to like help people out. They'll nice. need you to cast some spell to help them out you've got to like get learn the recipe and then go and get the resources there's like six or seven different areas and yeah just got to craft those items sounds wholesome it's really fun yeah there's nothing wrong with a bit of wholesomeness we need more of that in the world don't we yes Mm, absolutely dan what have you been playing this week my friend pretty simple for me i've just been on forza Oh, nice. I, I think I think it was last week we were discussing Forza, so seems fitting. Yeah, I've, I really want $5 million. That's really what I've been trying. I want to buy this one house. It looks like a mansion. And that's, Ooh, okay. yeah, that's sort of what I've been pushing towards. So I've, I've just, it's funny using the different vehicles and working out which ones are better for your skill score, like your skill scores and then, you know, skill song oh. comes on and all that sort of stuff. So I I didn't realise until recently, but the truck has actually been the best one for me oh. racking up my skills. So, I, you know, like I, I got this, it's 
Okay, it's going to be tiny for some people, but I got a million skill score the other day, which I, I was excited about because I saw the oh, no. yellow thing go bing, 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 bing. Just because it's not big for other people doesn't mean it's not big for you. That's yeah. awesome. Good job. I thought it was, I thought it was good, but my favorite oh. car to drive is actually the Ford Bronco in that in that game. That is if I just go anything about cars. I do not go uh, on roads. It's just full drive. I just I okay. do not go on roads. I just go as the crow flies. Well, oh. That's why they call it an off-road vehicle, isn't yeah, it? That yeah, that sounds awesome, actually. I, I do not go on any road. I'm probably that one guy in Forza that people are like, where the hell is he going? I'm just barreling oh, through trees. That's my favourite thing about Forza is that you can do that stuff, man. Like, yeah. there is... There's just something about being able to just be like, no, nope, screw this track or this road. I'm just going out of it. You know, they started in the PS2 era where like the street racing games and stuff cut started to come in as opposed to like just circuits. Tracks. And that's what started, you know, you got that little bit of feel of, oh, you know, I'm going where I shouldn't be going or more freedom. You were still essentially stuck to a track. It was mm-hmm. just yeah. looked different. But Forza is, yeah. I think I said this last week. It's definitely a, a whole different beast, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like like I said though. I think last time we spoke, I had like thirty something cars, and yeah. I felt that was too much. I'm pretty sure I'm up to 120 now. So wow, nice. wow, we were. been smashing it. Awesome. Yeah, they're just. I've said it before. It's just there's too many. Yeah, there's yeah. too many yeah. at the same time. When you do, I think I spoke about it last week. You got the the wheel that spins around, sort of yeah, like a yeah, yeah. lotto thing. I mean, the Kino or whatever the hell it is, but it spins around. Sometimes it just lands on crap. Like I, I got a straw hat the other day. Like, what the hell am I going to do with a straw hat? I've I've won like six dresses. What? And you would look fantastic in a dress and a straw hat. What are you talking I, about? Then you can go for being, feel the wind flow through your straw. Yeah. but Perfect. See, I that's don't, why I, you need one. I don't customise a character that you don't see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He sits that's in the car most of the time. I swear my guy looks like perfect. Elon Musk, though. <laughs> I was uh-huh. thinking about it. I was like, I'd love to take a picture of this and just tweet it to Elon Musk. <laughs> he Do it. Should. Keep an eye out for that. in a cowboy hat, and I reckon Elon would look the same. Oh, sick. Yeah, you should do it. <laughs> I love that. That's your little uh, your history of your character there, making up the narrative in your head as you go along. Yeah. I like he that. is Elon Musk. Yeah. He, made, he made Tesla, and then he decided to stuff that, and he's going to go into combustion engines again and just yep. destroy <laughs> the planet with V12s and stuff. That's all I'm driving. In Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in Mexico, yeah. it is. It is a fantastic game. I do like the um, the barn finds. I do like the fact that people are driving, like randos are just driving around you, or the eliminator. Oh, yeah, that's the cool. eliminator is my favorite. It's basically like everybody starts off with a V Dub Beetle, and there's my favorite car. flares that come up. So you got to try and get to a new car quickly, so that way you can get a faster car. Because mm-hmm. you challenge people around you. So if you challenge somebody, it's then you got to, you and this other person, so only two, have to go to this spot. Whoever gets there first wins and the other one gets knocked out, hence Eliminator. Obviously, yeah, like, fun. If you, yeah it is, it's good fun. It, the, the worst part is, and the best part, is if you land next to a spot where there's a car that's like level six as an example yep that's it you could if you fly around you could smoke heaps of people and knock them out really quickly yeah so it's all about luck where you first spawn in sometimes yeah i mean every time you win you can choose to upgrade your car so you go from six to seven blah 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 or you take your opponent's car occasionally Mm. i've sometimes accidentally clicked take my opponent's car which has turned out to be a worse car, and I've screwed myself. Oh, no. Sometimes I'm a That's little too quick with that it, button. Though. But, yeah, no, look, the, the Eliminator is actually the, for me, that's the most fun thing. That's what I do. I, I play the Eliminator. And nice. I get frustrated 
when I lose. But it's, are we all? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the annoying part is you'll be flying towards the finish line. So I've got this guy. I've completely got this guy. He's got no hope. Bang, hit a tree. That's it. That's it. You're done. You're oh, done. no. That's, uh, this guy must have been laughing all the way to the bank because I had a more powerful oh, car. He's still it's on like, number oh, one. Sorry. I was on number seven. And, I'm f- and we're, f- we're flying. And I was a bit cocky at the start and let him just go, you know, I'll give you a chance. Yeah, yep. I'll give you a chance. And then I've flown up and I've sort of come and I was like, got this. Boom, tree. That's it. Oh, and this, then- um, this reminds me of a little story. I think it's called like uh, the hare and the tortoise. Yeah, that's me. Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was me. Don't even be cocky, came past- mate. He even came past and started honking afterwards. After I, <laughs> I was just like, you wanker. That's what I was saying. <laughs> sucked in. That's yeah. so good. Good on him. So, yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, that's all I've been playing is, is Forza. I've, I tried playing a bit of Descendants, actually. I think it's called Descendants. Oh, yeah. It's that push bike game. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't, can't say I've heard of it or know I'm exactly what I played it for about five minutes. So I was getting pumped up because yep. I've got a new push bike and stuff. So, yeah. nice, you know, nice. And I've got massive fat tires. So I feel really extreme. I'm not, but I feel extreme. <laughs> so I wanted to do some extreme stuff and, um, yeah, downloaded this game from Game Pass. It was a little bit boring, you know. So that's well, the, that's the beauty of Game Pass, isn't it? Yeah. You haven't spent any money on it, so it's all good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's why I like no. it. So, Oh, definitely. No, it's fantastic for that. So, yeah, so. no, that's that's it for me. That's all I've been doing. I will be jumping back on to Halo Infinite. For some reason, it disappeared from my account. Oh, why? That's yeah, so no good. Why. Went to play it the other night with some mates, and I had to re-download it. Go okay, Microsoft, if you're listening, come on. I was not, I was not so Dan happy, Jane. Yeah, fair enough. Have you still got all your progress and all your skills yeah, and all that jazz? That's the one thing they're actually always good about is you never really. Okay. Uh, I, I think with the Xbox and the PlayStation, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, because you got the PS5, but I yep. think it's just a lot harder to lose your, so- like your, your spot where you are compared to the Nintendo. If you just... Say, for example, so, your whole thing crashes and you've yep. got no you got no Xbox, you buy a brand new Xbox, you log into your Xbox. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's, if your switch breaks, like you've got it. If your switch breaks, like your your stuff's gone. They do have a nice cloud storage. Not feature. for all games. Yeah, not, not for, for all games. games. Yeah, no. not for all games. Like, it's like only some games. Animal Crossing, for example. It's not even like all Nintendo. It's not even all their first party stuff. No. Okay. Okay. There you go. Uh, yeah. I, apparently, I wasn't the one to ask about that, Dan. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> For the PlayStation yeah, side you've of got a- The PlayStation is, is, I mean, I haven't had any issues with it, so I can't really comment. For so- me, I play across two Xboxes, so I, I yeah, still okay. use my old Xbox One. So for me, yep. it's really cool that I can jump onto that Xbox One and we really need to have my catchphrases like cloud gaming and yeah, yeah, jump onto do. that Xbox One and use the cloud gaming feature to play Forza because it yeah. plays it better. Uh, quality is a bit less on the Xbox One, but it, it plays it better. So I play that and then if I move to my Series X, I can still... Basically, it's like I've in the same spot, whereas with a Nintendo, you don't really have that cohesive network. And I, th- I think that's something that Nintendo really, really needs to work on moving forward, especially like y- you guys in the same house. Having a Nintendo, you really have to use your Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So there is a, we noticed when we picked up the OLED switch. Uh, which I'm sure it annoys Laura, but every time 
what annoys me sometimes too, could because I have downloaded games through my account onto the OLED, which is Laura's main switch now. Every time I go into Mario Kart on my switch, it says there is saved data from a different console. Would you like to download it onto this one? So there is that. I don't know if that's a new thing. Or For me, it happens with every single game I play because your profile is like on my Switch too. Yep. So every game that I play that you've played, yep. it always says, oh, we found some save data. Do you want to move it over? And I'm like, no, because you can only have like one yeah. um, profile of like save data on there at a time, right? No, you can have, that's how we both play Breath of the Wilds. We've got played it on separate profiles. Yeah, but the user. No. Or can I, you transfer two it'll users? It'll be over? it'll be asking you, do you want Tom's save, save yeah, data it's to come me. over to Tom's account on yeah. this switch? Not yours. It won't affect yours. Yeah. It won't affect your account at all. It's no. really annoying. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that. It's something we should probably look into. I don't think there's anything we can do about yeah, it. The, Are either of you guys going to ask me what I've played this week? What or have you am played I this have week? To ask myself? I was just about to ask you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify Rude. something. Rude. Is that you, Sorry, you should really on. let Laura play more Nintendo? Anyway, I'll let her play what, you gonna, what games have you been playing? I, yeah, I'm excited to talk about what games I've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> By calling you guys rude, I came across as rude, didn't I? Damn it. It's usually how it goes. <laughs> Have you been playing oh, Fata No, I actually haven't gone back to it. I've been watching uh, Futurama going to bed <laughs> instead. Don't ask me why. We're currently not at work because of a Christmas break, and I feel like I can stay up later and watch Futurama. So I haven't haven't played any more Fata Morgana. I have been attempting to finish Shin Megami Tensei 5, which was my game of the year for 2021. I absolutely love it. It's imagine if Pokemon actually grew up with their audience and was dark and gritty and had like religious themes and demons and stuff like that. It's not a game that uh, Jesus would like because there's a lot of demons in it, but it's a, it's a game that I very much like, which is good. Or maybe Jesus would like, I don't know. He could smite the demons. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm not well versed, but yeah, fantastic game. It's just a, a classic JRPG turn-based combat, but it's really in depth and it's just so unique. The Shin Megami ter- series as a whole is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't looked into it, uh, if you don't know, the Persona franchise is actually a sub of the Shin Megami series. So there's that little link there. And Persona 5 Strikers is also the latest free game if you uh, signed up to the PlayStation Network. It is one of the free games of January, arguably the best one at the moment. So if, if you're interested in playing that, definitely look into that. I have also been working my way through the Uncharted series. Ooh. Yeah. Have you played Uncharted, Dan? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Uncharted. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine because we have mentioned in the podcast before Jack and Daxter and how much we all loved those games. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So instead of, yeah. sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I absolutely adore it. I love the, um, the uh, which, which is, I think it's the third one where you drive the cars. Yeah, through the desert and stuff. Yeah, and then you can, yeah. you got the, is it the, R1 and the R2 button, and you can, like, go up and down. Yeah, with one your- of the cars is, like, a hopper type thing. Yeah, and, and then you've got the hover cars. Yeah, yep, yep. That's the second one and the, and the third one yeah. as well. Oh, like man, that. That, that's, can't speak highly enough of the Jack series. No. If anybody oh. hasn't played it, like, oh. please. Play so it's, instead of making Jack 4, Naughty Dog, the developers, decided they would do something different. 
a uh, bit of a side tangent. Before Jack, they created a little little game called Crash Bandicoot as well. They did the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy. So instead of making Jack 4, they got a little over it. I don't know the full story, but they wanted to do something different and they created Uncharted. Uh, yeah, Naughty Dog is fantastic. So I have recently, somewhat recently, completed The Last of Us, the first The Last of Us game. So... I thought, you no, know, stick on the Naughty Dog theme and go back and play the Uncharted games. I uh, picked up the trilogy for like $9 or something ridiculous. So, yeah, uh, currently almost finished number two. And, yeah, they are bloody fantastic. Just in time for the remaster of the fourth one to come out on the PS5. So I'm in two minds about that because if you sign up to the PlayStation Network, you are able to get Uncharted 4 for free on the PS5 through the PlayStation Hits section, which is where I played The Last of Us. You can get, uh, you can actually get the remaster of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, God of War, all these like amazing or Ratchet and Clank game, heaps of good titles. Um, and Uncharted 4 is a part of that. So I don't know if I'm willing to drop another like $70 or something for the remastered version plus the DLC, but I do have a PS5, so I probably should make the most of it and get the remastered version. What do you guys think? Mm. Why not? Spend money. Yeah. Yeah. Why you, not? You know what? I've got the money. It's not like I'm, I'm strapped for it or would, you know, be put, you know, I wouldn't have to eat two minute noodles all week if I was to buy it. So, well, when you got the PS5, mm. we got like a better TV because our TV wasn't capable of like playing the PS5 to its fullest potential. So, we got a new TV and everything for the PS5. So, you might as well you are so use right. that PS5. You are so right. Yeah. Well, yeah. If I got a new TV for a lot more than $70, mm -hmm. then I can get the new version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's it. All right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. 28th of January, that comes out, I'm pretty sure. So, oh, that's when Legends Arceus comes out. Oh, there you go. I will be playing. Yeah simultaneously mm. two two new games two deliciously new games <laughs> delicious yeah, naughty dog is one of my favorite developers of all time so uh yeah definitely speak highly of the uncharted series it's a bit the first one's a bit feels a bit clunky now but you got to remember this was like one of the very first ps3 games to come out and it's just for the time it's just completely new it was something so different and yeah, it's just it's just really good. I love Nathan Drake. Looking forward to the new movie. Anyone yeah. else? Tom Holland. I love yeah. Tom Holland. I think he's fantastic. Mark yeah. Wahlberg. I mean, he's okay. But yeah, Mark, my one. Sorry, go on. Like, but have you yeah. seen all the rubbish around yeah. Tom Holland only being able to play Spider Man? Oh, dude, that's not true. No, he did a fantastic movie recently called Chaos Walking. That yep. has nothing to do with Spider Man. No. It's basically no. like everybody can read, not necessarily read men's thoughts. They project their yeah. thoughts. For yeah, those with uh, Daisy, someone who was Daisy Ridley. Yes, Daisy Ridley from Star Wars. Yes, like he, yeah. he was fantastic in that. So he that yeah. I'm I thought he already. Up. I'm fired up right now. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I thought he already proved that he was yeah. very much capable of it remember when he first got the spider-man role and then what what was that show he was on and he dressed in drag and he did this full oh, yeah. like like umbrella i think it was by rihanna and it was hilarious like straight up there like that's like the complete opposite of this like i'm spider-man you know mm -hmm. like yeah nice. he's he's a, I, I can't speak high enough he is spider-man but he's also just fantastic at everything else. He's, yeah, he's a, he's he's a fantastic actor. And no, I think I'm really those looking comments are rubbish. So I'm looking forward to I agree. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it coming to the big screen. I, I think Me too. I think it'll be fantastic. He's good. I've got My no one qualms qualm against with it. Is that Sullivan in the Uncharted games, who is being played by Mark Wahlberg, is visibly older than Mark Wahlberg is currently so i think they should have gone with a little bit of an older actor i feel like they get the short end of the stick quite often 
know, characters aren't uh, quite often made younger to suit younger, more prominent actors, if you will. Mm. Uh, so I would have liked to have seen someone older in that role, but, but you know, can't win them all. Tom Holland looks young too, I guess. So maybe they're just going for like an origin story or something. Mm, yeah, true, I don't, I don't know where they're I, going with it yet. I have, I've been trying to keep out of the news with, with I that. don't think it's based on any specific game. I mean, I know there's the classic from Uncharted 3, the aeroplane bit where you have to jump over the cargo that's hanging out the back of the plane. That scene is in the movie, but that's the only kind of hint to the games I've really seen. Yeah, is it meant to be like a combination of all of the games or a before? Or are they just taking inspiration from? Yeah. Uh, Like I said, I've I've way out of it. Same thing with the recent Spider-Man movie. I made sure yeah, here. that I didn't talk to anybody about that before it came out. I, I sort of knew, I mean, obviously everybody knew that the bad guys from the other Spider-Man movies were going to be yep. in it. That was pretty well, that, that The whole marketing is Doc Ock. So, yeah, I mean, yeah you know, exactly. So, no. um, but what they did be with careful. that movie was, be, was be just careful. fantastic. Be careful, no spoilers here. <laughs> we, yeah, no, no. That's that's all I was going to say. Is I, I just think it was fantastic. I really liked no, where they went with it. And Same. again, Tom Holland, fantastic actor. Can he only play Spider Man? No, you're useless. Oh. Yep. You can also play Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series. Yes. Apparently, and I'm pretty confident with him. Mm. Apparently, fun fact, just before we move on quickly. Apparently, Tom Holland wanted to do a James Bond prequel type thing a young James Bond movie and somehow that got morphed into the Uncharted movie that we're getting. Oh, okay. I thought it would have been a young Indiana Jones personally, yeah. but, you know, whatever floats your boat. It's very Indiana Jonesy, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody at Naughty Dog was watching Indiana Jones when, when they, they came, came up, up with that yeah. concept of Uncharted. That's for sure. For sure. All right. Well, I'm glad everyone's had a good week in gaming. Bit of fun. So... First things first, to tick off on our little what we're actually going to talk about this week. Dan, you've got a little bit of news for us, my friend. Yes. So there have been some changes at the low-grade gamer. Fairly big Mm. changes, uh, which involves the brand name of the low-grade gamer being dissolved and changing into iDigitalGames.com. This uh, has happened for a number of reasons. I'm not going to get into everything as some of the reasons are deeply personal, unfortunately. Some are Fair related to, to health and other bits and pieces, but I do want to assure customers that have ordered something, whether recently you, you should have already been contacted if your order is going to be refunded for any reason. So, for example, if you have a pre-order that is past the 31st of January, you uh, that order will be refunded unless it has been uh, part of a part order. For example, 50% of the order is complete. The other 50% is waiting because we're waiting for a game. We will still complete that full purchase. Gaming nice. chairs will still, all, all orders up until today's date all of those gaming chairs will still be fulfilled we're just working with our supplier now to get those gaming chairs out and anything that should have been refunded has already been refunded if you do have warranty issues uh, iDigital Games is still here to help so just contact info at iDigitalGames.com we'll sort out the warranty side of things uh, through the low grade gamer all your order stuff and all the customer data is still there. So uh, that's one thing that we that I do want to stress is that it, we're not ditching the low grade gamer for any any reason, yeah, any malicious reason, I guess. It's no. uh, just something that had to happen, and that the we had to move to a more digital platform. So we now only sell digital games, whether that be for the Xbox, Steam, Origin, Rockstar. GOG, et cetera. Yep. We do so mainly PC. Yeah. You, you get the yep. keys instantly as well. So within a minute or two, 
generally. We mm-hmm. can confirm that. We have have gotten their keys, yeah, almost almost instantly. I think it took like 45 seconds for us to get yeah. our key. That yeah, we've, um, I've worked really hard to make sure that that process is within, yeah, I, I, I mean, technically it should happen within, uh, I think it's 58 seconds is the cutoff. Okay, but there you go. It, it depends on your email provider as well. So let, let's go oh, a couple I of mean, minutes. 58 seconds, 78 seconds. Yeah. People can't complain, can they? No. So, it yeah, you, do, you well. do get those codes really quickly. Uh, but, Same yeah, we, we are still here to service those customers that do have uh, previous warranties. So your orders yep. will still be in the system. We have just changed the designation now. So before yep. it was there was just an S at the start of the uh, orders. Now there's a D in front of it. So just sure. to just to help with differentiating, and it also makes it a lot easier to identify orders. And like I said, you will still be able to go into your customer account and yep. find all the, all your previous orders there. So none of that's changed. Customer points have also remained the same. So we filtered through all of our customer data just recently to fix up the point side of things, uh, which Good. took a long time. So that was fun. But Hard work. We, uh, we wanted to make sure that every customer still had their points. So it's now called iDigital Perks. That's oh, beautiful. Amazing. That's nice. Just rebrand. Yeah. Well, why not? We're changing the whole thing. Oh, so. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, for, yeah. So that's now changed to iDigital Perks, which is, which is cool. So discounts all remain the same. Points earning is the same. All of those bits and pieces. So... Don't be too concerned with that side of things. Nothing we've has changed. Got our landline number, if you want to contact us, we've got email, we've still got live chat. So we've got Beautiful. all of those mediums still. Nothing's changed in the back end other than our contact email address, yep. phone number, live chat, all that sort of stuff is, is the same. So oh, that's same. pretty much where we're at with yep. our digital games. Uh, we're not going to be changing the podcast to some my digital games no. because Dan is the low grade gamer and he's still here. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there is no need to change. I think I say every week, the low grade gamer himself and, and that is Dan. So there is a, there is no need to change it. It's still, still both of our IPs, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm, absolutely. Nice. Well, that's good news. If anyone's looking out for digital games, go hit up iDigital. Exactly. Speaking of digital, anybody yes. seen E3? Yes. It is all digital again this year, isn't it? Unsurprising, really. Yeah. Uh, real world circumstances, I guess you could call it. Yes. Uh, COVID. There's a, there's a little virus hanging around in case anyone's been living under a rock for the last two years. Uh, I'm jealous if you have. No, I know, right? I wish I hadn't heard of it. Anyways, E3 2020 was cancelled, right? Yep. yep, I'm not mistaken. I don't think they've had a, um, a in-person E3 since like 2019. Yes, so that's what I was going to say that. So 2020 was full cancelled. Mm-hmm. 2021, last year now, that was digital. Yeah. And then they're going digital again this year. Yeah. So I think we're like five or six months out from it. And possibly going digital for the future. The foreseeable future. Really? Foreseeable Is that the future. word on the grapevine? I think so. Okay. Yeah, no, well, I because like it was such a huge production. And so for all of the sponsors and things, they had to put, they put so much money and stuff into it. And I think a lot of them are thinking that it's not worth that investment anymore. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's all digital and there's no physical media, I don't think that some of the sponsors or the companies are going to be as interested, are they? So they're probably going to be unable to, even if things in the with the COVID situation do change, they'll probably be unable to create such a extravagant event regardless. True. Yeah. If it does come back to an in-person event, then it'll start off small again, won't it? Yeah. It won't be as big as it has been. But a lot of people are disappointed this year as far as, sorry, last year now. I'm still living in 2021. 
a lot of people were disappointed with E3 in 2021, but it was undoubtedly the biggest event in gaming of the year. And I mean, you've got to understand that there was, okay, there was nothing in 2020. So people were like, oh, that's going to be so good because everyone's going to show everything they've done. But they still didn't get a whole lot done because 2020 was, you know, a bit of a, a crap show to put it a little bit more PC than the term I would have liked to have used. Mm-hmm. So they came, all these companies came and showed what what they've been doing, which unfortunately isn't a whole lot. It's just, you know, real world situations. What yeah. can they do? That's the problem. Yep. Uh-huh. What do can they expect? Create a game as an example especially yep. if you're in the final stages of a game. Mm-hmm. And I'm not pretending to know exactly how all of this works. I'm, I'm not in that world. No, no, no neither. How could they possibly get this done when they're not in the same room? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's quite quite difficult, I'm you know, sure. Like, yeah, absolutely. Virtual meetings are one thing, but it just... It's got nothing on face-to-face, does it? No, even if you're just sitting in the same room as somebody and somebody's sitting there going, hey, what do you reckon if Daxter was a naked mole rat instead of a weasel? Mm. Right? What? The whole course of history could have been changed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What if no, we had COVID when Jack and Daxter came out? We may have had a naked mole rat instead. Thank God that mm-hmm. didn't happen. Instead, The Last of Us Part 2 didn't receive its multiplayer functionality, which will be released as a standalone game, apparently. Oh, that's soon. cool. Yeah, so I guess you know, there's, there's some things to look forward to. No, look, every company has been affected by the real-world scenarios of the past two years. And let's be honest, it's not going anywhere. Like, it, you know, microorganisms don't care what month it is or what year it is. So it's not going anywhere. I think this is something we're all going to have to start getting used to. And to be honest, for us here in Australia, E3 has always been digital anyways. <laughs> we, uh, I would love to have gone to an E3. I would still like to go to an E3 one day. Uh, you know, maybe if some kind of gaming and iDigital games kick off, maybe we could do a podcast live from E3. In the oh, year, my God. Probably in the year, like, 2072 by now. <laughs> 2077. Let's do that. Yeah. I mean, it seems I'm like down. a good goal to look forward to. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's always digital. So not, nothing much changes for us. Nintendo always does their direct anyway mm-hmm. uh, for E3. So that's the main thing. I look forward to. I think you safe to say is the main thing you look forward to as well. Yeah. Laura. Um, and last year, let's be honest, Microsoft had by far the best segment, if you will, of anything where they started finally talking about what they're doing with studios like Bethesda, mm. which is, I mean, you know, I think they finished their presentation with Starfield. So, I mean, you, you can't really go wrong. That game's been up in the air for, geez, at least a decade now. So, yeah, and it's finally coming this year, apparently, which is, that's going to be fantastic. So things are starting to roll on, but, yeah, you know, I, I I don't know why people are surprised that it's going all digital. It's, there's, you know, the US is in trouble again, so. Well, we even heard from Insanity last week. She was saying how bad it is over there at the moment. She's. Yeah. US citizens, so, you know, like... how bad it is over there. So, no, it's, exactly. I mean, it's not great here, but it's still no. Oh, oh. better. Like, even yeah. if it's I, better than, yeah. I mean, I had to go to the uh, post office earlier today. Yeah. And normally the mall is absolutely packed. And I don't really yep. like going, at, you know, at the moment due to COVID, but. Got orders to send and things to do. We we gotta we gotta attend. We've got, to, we've got to continue with life. Yes. So I I went there and it was dead. Oh there really? People no are being cars conscious. in the car park. There were barely any customers in the shops. Everybody was on iDigitalGames.com. Hey, yeah, where they should be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was quite eerie, especially being in in school holidays still. And yeah. a lot of people oh, okay. still being on holidays, mm-hmm. 
it's just, yeah, it was just dead. It was absolutely dead. There was nothing going on. Yeah, so if E3 was to happen in person, would would people even go? Yeah. that's. I guess that's another thing to consider, not just the safety of their patrons, but are the patrons even going to show up mm-hmm. in the first yeah, place? And, and What's the rules going to be? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it seems like way too tough a thing to coordinate. And people are concerned that E3 is going to go away. So this di- pathway down digital is a pathway to the end, which I don't think I agree with. I think that E3 is still a big force in games and it's an event that people will look forward to regardless of how they consume that media, mm-hmm. right? I look yeah. forward to it. Again, it's all digital for me all the time and I still look forward to it. I, I yeah, look totally. forward to E3, but I have a feeling uh, not – I think it is the beginning of the end and not because it's going digital – but because I think companies want more control about how they run their events. Oh, okay. If you That's look, fair. look at Sony pulling out, I think that was a big thing. And it was. While, yeah. while I'm not a huge fan of Apple mm-hmm. uh, as a company, I mean, most of my devices are actually Apple, but that's Many different reasons. It used to be very Android-based. Now it's a little bit Apple. I disappoint myself. But <laughs> if you have a look at them, their events are held by them, controlled yep. by them. Yep. They talk about what they want. Mm-hmm. And their embargoes are in place for media, as an example. So when things are released you will notice that a lot of the media are using the Apple quotations because they have to yeah, for certain reasons, right? It could be a feature hasn't been released yet, so they're talking about what the feature is meant to be able to do, but they showed it at their live event. They can control what's happening. Yes. E3 and all these other things, especially Microsoft. Microsoft are only getting bigger. You got Game Pass. You got they're taking over every damn game developing company. Xbox Game yeah, Studios yeah. is huge. Yeah, they're buying up. They're buying so, up a lot. Yeah. So what what are they going to do? Why yeah. why would they contribute to E three when they don't need to? They can create no, yeah, totally. their own uh, unique brand, unique event, and they control when they do it. Rather okay, than okay, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, E3 controlling when things happen to a certain degree because I'm sure the, the big three, Nintendo, oh, and Microsoft, would have a massive say in what happens. But I, I have a feeling E3 will be a little bit more game of the year-ish. Okay. Well, and I mean, more. I, the game of the year-ish was more E3 this yeah, year. Yeah, I meant, not, not, I meant like this year's a- game of the year's. Yeah, but how I see E3 going, I, I think it'll be yeah. E3 will be indie titles. Hey, yes. I'm I'm not opposed to that. We well, we always get uh, a bunch of indie stuff like Hollow Knight Silk Song. Uh, we mentioned in our latest YouTube video that was first shown off at E3 in 2019. The gameplay for that, mm. uh, I, while that is quite a large indie game, it's still had had a pretty big presence there. Mm. I remember people saying that, you know, people were lined up at the the Hollow Knight booth just as much as they were lined up at the Pokemon Let's Go booth, for example, or whatever else may have been there. So it's I th- I feel like it's a good platform for indie developers as well, which is is nice if they can afford to buy into it because obviously it costs money. But I think you're right, Dan, now that you mentioned that, I think you are a bang on there. It makes a hell of a lot of sense that, yeah, these companies work control. And that, that, that's okay. As well, like as- you said before, like like you said, Nintendo just showed their direct there. Yeah. So I guess they would just release it themselves instead of like releasing it at E3. But they do it anyway. They don't wait for E3 to show all of their... Hmm. Nintendo directs. Well, what's no, the they point don't. Of doing E3 if you don't need to. That's the yeah, yeah, that's absolutely where, fair enough. Yeah, and look, I as think long Sony as Sony really took 
took that on board. I think it did. I think yeah. Microsoft are definitely, definitely going to follow suit. I think Microsoft are wanting to be more Apple esque. Apple have fantastic yeah. marketing. Don't don't get me wrong. Everything oh, they no, do. Yeah marketing wise is is next level if you notice when they're doing their comparisons mm -hmm. they never compare against another phone i mean recently they have but in the past yeah. they've never compared against an, another phone they compare against their own phone yeah mm -hmm. totally so it's 20 percent quicker than our old phone yeah that it's, makes sense or it takes pictures 50 percent better than our old phone so they can compare it to their own stuff. They're controlling what they're comparing it to rather than at E3 sitting there watching Sony do their thing and then two minutes later watching Microsoft. Yeah, they're very much competing. Comparisons are going in people's heads yeah. Yeah. before the game has even had a chance to come to fruition. Absolutely. That's true, yeah. So if only Sony actually did something with their own thing, their state of play last year wasn't exactly the most exciting yeah, thing probably, in the world uh, no, i don't think they were that interested no. so i just want i just don't want the conventions I, I look as much as i've said this as much as i can't go to them and they're always all digital for me conventions are super fun and yeah. they there is a lot to be said about a bunch of like-minded individuals getting together to do a somewhat niche activity, which like, let's be honest, gaming, is, it's huge, but it's still, I mean, you know, you go to a, you go to a pub and uh, how many people are playing video games, however many hours a week, you know, that's still, still somewhat niche. And it's really nice to be able to go to a place where everybody is really interested in video games or cosplay or comics or whatever that your convention might be about. Uh, we like all of them. They're always super fun. And there's, yeah, there's a lot to be said. So I really hope that E3, the spirit of E3 stays. And if Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo do their own things, I just hope that they happen is a kind of a convention-y type deal. That's How all. hard would it be to run an indie convention? That would be awesome. I Let's get don't that a go. Oh, yeah. There is a lot of really, really good Australian indie developers mm -hmm. on the scene at the moment. Like, like real two of the best indie games of all time, in my opinion, Golf Story and Hollow Knight are both Australian and untitled Goose Game. I was Sorry, just going to say Goose Game. And there is more than that. There's definitely more, but that's just three of my personal favourites. Yeah, they're all Australian based. So, I mean, maybe it's not that hard. There you go. Look out for that. They're some kind of low-grade indie game convention mm. coming to a theatre near you in the next... Doesn't that name just roll off the tongue? Five decades. <laughs> 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 ah, we'll figure out the logistics later. <laughs> we'll have to turn it into a um acronym. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. God, I'd sit here and do it now, but nobody, nobody's interested in that. You know what people might be interested in, though? Mario Kart 9 rumors. Mm, I so, would be interested in Mario Kart 9 with a twist. Yeah, so literally this is this is doing the rounds on the internet this week, doing the rounds on Twitter. It's literally one sentence or two sentences by one industry analyst and people have taken it and they've run with it, which I get because I mean that's it's kind of what we're doing at the moment, so you can't look too down on them. And it's Mario Kart, like headlines with Mario Kart in it. They're always going to get clicks. So, you know, fair enough. But they have said this specific analyst, some doctor, has said that Mario Kart 9 is in development and that it's going to be coming with a new twist. And that is all. And since then, people have said might be Mario Kart 10. Have you heard that? No. No? Mario so, Kart 10. Yeah. What about 9? Well, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit was 9. But that was Mario Kart Home Circuit, not Mario Kart 9. Well, was Mario Kart Double Dash a numbered Mario Kart entry? I'm pretty sure they counted it as one. 
So why not count home circuit? Was Mario Kart 64 wasn't, obviously wasn't the 64th entry <laughs> as much as my childhood self really hoped it was. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> oh, I hoped good. for a long time. There's 63 other Mario Karts. Oh my God, i got so much to look forward to. If only. If only. <laughs> but yeah, apparently, and that, that way they can do the Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Good right, one. right. <laughs> yeah. What's the twist going to be? That's what I want to know. I want Double Dash 2, dude. Well, Anyone this, else? Is, this is the exact quote. Okay, I'm yeah, aware Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still selling very well on the Nintendo Switch, but Mario Kart 9 is in active development and comes with a new twist. That's in brackets. And Nintendo could tease it this year. Yes. That is the full quote. So, I mean, I'm sure it is in development. I'm sure it's probably been in development for ages. I'm 95% sure that as soon as a Mario Kart is released, like literally then and there, Nintendo starts working on the next one because it's massive. It's a huge yeah. IP for them. It's arguably, well, it is the highest selling Switch game. Yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And it's not mm-hmm. even a Switch game. No, yeah. It's a re-release of a Wii U game. Mm. So, so it's not surprising that they're working on a no. Mario Kart for the Switch. They've been working on it for eight years now, apparently, yeah. if what I say is true. So the, the Wii U release was released in 2014. There you go. So, yeah, eight years they've been working on a new Mario Kart for. And then they I'm almost released sure it in They've been doing... Thing. Yes, yeah. for the Switch. Yes, yeah. makes sense. Because the Wii U obviously didn't have the fan base. But the, the thing is that, you know, if they have been working on it for that long, obviously they knew it was probably going to be for their next system because the Wii U never did that well, never forecast to do that well. They surely had something near completion in 2017, 2018. Right? I don't think you reckon because Nintendo seems to ride a gravy train Mm -hmm. for as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at Mario Kart 8 is actually a perfect example. They have just sat on it for that long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they don't do much else other than release this or release that DLC or blah blah blah. I don't think that's even happened in ages, to be honest. Yeah. No. no. Uh, releasing it all, I mean, they, they released it in April of t- 2017. So yep. releasing it then and then waiting for even Splatoon 3. Mm. Yep, that's, that's a 2017. That's, that's been a long time coming. Yep. Uh, oh, absolutely. Breath of the Wild 2, they're not, they don't even really hint at what's going on. They show a two-second trailer of Breath of the Wild too. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see them doing anything with Mario Kart 9 until they need to. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the contention, isn't it? So I don't know if they would have had something near completion before, like, because also if it's with a new twist, like it's, I mean, obviously this is speculation, but you would hope that it is something that, takes advantage of the different hardware that it's on. Yeah, I hope so. I'd be down for that. For sure. Whatever it may be. Imagine like, what about the first person view, like through the windscreen view? Oh my and God. And you have your switch and you're that. driving. That would be that would uh, be cool. Yeah, wouldn't that be incredible? That's just one idea. I wonder A if the bit new like Mario Kart Live. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat combine those two things. Yeah. yeah I just think that this is Look, allegedly, yeah, Nintendo does start developing a new Mario Kart as soon as the last one was released. And I, my speculation is that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was only ever meant to be, oh, okay, it didn't sell that well on Wii U. Might as well chuck it on the Switch. Let that sell a few things, get people hyped for Mario Kart 9, which will release it a year or two years later. And then they went, holy crap, it is doing so well. It's one of the highest selling games of all time, not just on the Switch. It is the highest selling Switch game, but yeah, it's, it's up there with the highest selling games of all time. So 
they just haven't needed to. And then they've had to go back to the drawing board almost and be like, okay, we need to do something really different, have a new twist. No, Any speculations on the new twist, by the way? Well, yeah, I wonder if it's going to be a twist within, like, the core gameplay or maybe some kind of twist in, like, you know, those little games that you can do? I'm not really, like, I much prefer doing the actual racing, but you know how there's, like, battle mode. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if it'll be a twist in battle mode or with yeah. the actual core gameplay. I hope it's not battle mode because it's my yeah. least favorite aspect. Yeah, I never play battle mode. Uh, Dan, any speculation? Elimination. Maybe they'll put also. planes. Elimination, yeah, that's not a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, so that would be good. It has sold 38.74 million nice. copies lifetime. 3.34 million yeah. in the last six months. Yeah, see, it's it's still doing yeah. really well. Well, because anytime somebody buys a Switch bundle, they get Mario Kart as well. Yeah, yeah, it comes in a bundle, and also so that would boost sales like if immediately. Have, if you have a Switch, like, what's the first game? If you have any Nintendo hardware, what's one of, if not the first game you get? Yeah, it's world. Mario Kart. It should be Breath of the Wild, but the it most recognizable IP is Mario Kart. Yeah. Like, it's just... I agree. Especially parents buying stuff for kids. Yes, yeah, exactly. We sold, uh, if we go by percentages, Mm -hmm. I think 60% more switches with the Mario Kart 8 DLC, uh, like the the fact that you can download because it's not actually a cartridge that you get in the bundle. It's it's the... Yep. Download copy. Download. We sold eight, we we sold that much more than we did the OLED. Okay, there you go. Is that so a the, supply and demand thing though? Like, is that does the OLED supply doesn't the, the OLED supply was struggling, but yep. it was even just people visiting the pages. Mm-hmm. We, we obviously with our analytics, we can I, I can see yeah you can see what's going drill down into everything. So mm-hmm. e- even with the an- analytics, people weren't really jumping on board on the uh, Switch OLED versus the Switch with Mario Kart on it. So that Switch with Mario Kart had, I think there was 300%, I think it was 308% more views than what the Switch OLED had mm. across both consoles. So as in the, the white and the and the near. And the- Yep. Mm-hmm. versus just the one with Mario Kart. So it, look, well, there's a people difference look at in the price of, of 40 bucks or something. But Yeah. Mm. Well, people look at it and they get an extra thing. Yeah. Who doesn't want more things? I want more things. The only yeah. thing I really like about the OLED is the, the new dock. That's what I would want. The OLED, we have a video on some kind of gaming if anyone is interested in checking out. We have two videos actually on the OLED uh, where we go into more detail. We won't go into it here, but um, it's a point of preference, basically. It, it is both worth getting and not worth getting. Depending the screen is way better. On who you are, yeah. But if you've already got a Switch, maybe you maybe don't not. need to mm. ditch that one and buy another one. Exactly. But if you don't have one... Get the OLED. Yeah. Get the OLED, buy Mario Kart separately. But if you're a mum and you're buying a present for one of your kids, you're probably going to buy... Yep. A mum wouldn't be like, oh, my God, it's like 0.08 of an inch bigger or whatever it is. Yeah. And they probably don't even know what an OLED is. So they're just like, well, this one comes with Mario Kart. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mario. Everyone likes Mario, right? And they're not wrong. I just want to quickly say before we get off this topic, I think that the twist might be they're going to do a Smash Brothers of kart racing. Oh, okay. Yeah. A Smash Brothers of kart racing. Well, they're just going to have all of Nintendo's IPs in Mario Kart. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is kind of going that way already. You can play as Link. I think yeah. you can play as the Inklings. Yeah, there's heaps Isabel of Isabel from Animal Crossing. There yeah. is heaps. But why not? I mean... Smash Brothers just missed out on the hundred characters. Why not? Why not make it Mario Kart? Why not that just go cool. hundred characters? Screw it. Let's race as Bayonetta and Simon from Castlevania and <laughs> you know whoever Ness. 
Like, yeah. why not? Why not? I reckon, I reckon you'll be able to f- race planes. Well, they kind of already did that with the little... Uh, glider. Yeah, the glider. Yeah, okay. It's, okay, it's, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah I think the planes would be really cool. Like a race through the sky, you know? I would like to see something like they did with Crash Team Racing or Diddy Kong Racing, where it has like a fully fledged single player mode which Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is definitely missing. It's the worst thing about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is that there wasn't even like, because with the other Mario Karts, you didn't even necessarily have like a story mode per se, but you unlocked yeah, you the are. races. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they will have a story mode. I would love to see them go heavy on the single player in Mario Kart. And yeah, do like at a- least unlock the yeah. races. Like, Yeah. Or, man, go further and drive around, like, this world and then enter each race through a portal, mm-hmm. like like Diddy Kong Racing yeah. or Crash Team. That mm-hmm. would be for me. But, you know, I don't I don't know the analytics of Mario Kart. We play Mario Kart almost solely multiplayer, but that's because we can't play it single. Well, because single player is no good. Well, there, yeah, you can't. You don't do the unlocking no. thing. Yeah. If, if there was a... Uh, part of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe where you could like unlock the races and things like we would have spent way more hours on the game than we have. Definitely. Mm. Something to work towards a goal. Mm-hmm. I, I only like play with my daughter, so for me multiplayer only. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the only time see, I but, play it. See, but that might change if they have this single single player campaign. You yeah. Know? Who knows? So on your point, do you think, and this isn't just about Mario Kart, do you think open world is where it's at? In terms of games and video games play. in general. Well, it seems a lot of a lot of things are going that way. I don't I don't necessarily think that Mario Kart will be like an open world type experience. I think it'll very much be like a hub world or a couple of hub levels where you jump into you know, through portals and go into races and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if it does go that way, uh, as far as other games are concerned, uh, uh, yes, I think it is the new thing. You remember when Assassin's Creed first released and the crowds was the new thing? They were able to have hundreds of people on screen at one time, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden. Every game had crowds in it. <laughs> and it was this new whiz bang, like, whoa, crowds. you can, Yeah, crowds. And Assassin's Creed did it. I don't I don't even necessarily think they were the first, but they were definitely one of the pioneers as being able popularized to popularized crowds. Yeah, yeah. And especially with the stealth element, how you could blend into the crowd and you know, stealth the way. And that was huge. I remember going back to Jack and Daxter, there is a scene in the second one, I believe, where they had like pretty much every character from the game was in the final scene. They're like all together and like, you know, stuff's going down, obviously. And it's a big like, whoa, yay, congratulations on winning, basically. And there is so many characters on screen that are literally just standing there doing nothing, like not even blinking because they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, they just couldn't do it. And it was a big struggle for Naughty Dog at the time to even get them there on screen. So to have this big crowd thing was something new. And I feel like that was a very long-winded way of saying this, but I feel like open world is that new thing, you know, the new big draw card to games. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Hey, what, what, what do you guys feel? Don't just drop this on me and don't input. <laughs> uh, I well, I agree. I think that a lot of, and so many like fans of games are pushing for franchises to make things open world, like Pokemon. Remember yes. when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out and everyone was like disappointed that it wasn't like Breath of the Wilds. Mm. Like there was always that comparison being made. Like, we want a Breath of the Wilds Pokemon, like an open world version. And I guess we're like kind of getting that with Arceus. Or, or I think it's like, I don't actually think it's going to be open world, though. I think it's going to be more like Monster Hunter. I agree with that. Looks more Monta, Monster Hunter-y. But yeah, there's pressure Hunter. from the fans to yeah. give that as well. Yeah, you're very, you're very right there. I think Pokemon's harder to do open world. Personally, with the amount I, of Pokemon there is. I, I felt they did a decent job with Sword and Shield, but me too. Yeah, 
that's coming from somebody who hasn't played since Silver and then I came back with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee yep. and then played Sword and Shield. So, I, you know, I haven't been dedicated like a lot of fans have been of the series. I, I'm i just... Yes, Tom? Like me. Oh, uh, you're like you, yes. Yep. No, I've, I yep. haven't, you know... My first one was okay. blue and then That's I think right. red. I can't remember. Yep, red and blue. Classics. So I think my my issue with open world, because I love open world. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of open world. All the games I play are open world. No, I think it's it's definitely going that way at mm. least. Is it going to take away from the I guess not intensity, but the uniqueness of open world. So you've got Forza, which is that's pretty much open world. Yeah. Um, you know, Breath of the Wild, which was open world. Grand Theft Halo. Auto is pretty much, yeah, Halo Infinite. Yep. Skyrim. Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Many other games. All sorts. Yeah, all sorts. Is it going to take that's away from that thing. uniqueness? Uh, hmm. I don't think so. I think well, if it's... everything is one thing, then it's no longer unique. But also, open world, it I don't think it would work for every game either. No, I think it's important to still have. Like, what about side-scrolling platformers? Yeah, like it, Metroidvanias, and you know, all sorts like. Hmm. I don't think everything should be open world, no. No, I don't think everything will ever be because, as you said, some genres of games just don't, they can't be. Open world Tetris. Oh, there you go. There's there's a nice one. I could go for that. Imagine. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the big obvious one is the new Sonic game coming up, oh, being yeah. open world. Yeah. And so that's a 3D platformer. Uh, kind of, it was a very linear kind of 3D platformer, and now it's going open world. I guess 3D platformers have kind of been open level y, at least, like Mario Odyssey is very much open level. Somewhat open, yeah. Uh, Bowser's Fury, the new addition to Mario, Super Mario 3D World, which was released last year, also one of the best games of last year. That was very much open world, and they did a very good job in making you progress how they wanted you to through one big continuous world, uh, which was very cool. Make a comment. Yeah, please. Quickly. No. You know <laughs> how we, we think our phones are listening to us? And yes. Stalking oh, us? Yeah. They are, aren't they? TikTok's listening. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Two seconds ago, I just saw something flash up on my iPad. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jack and Daxter digital collection on PS5. <laughs> Ooh, is that? Series listening, man. I'm going to have to get that. So, well, there you go. It's done its job, hasn't it? Because I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. So, There's some targeted advertising. I have completed the PL. I don't know what that means. And it was perfect. No issues at all. I've started Jack 2. Oh, uh, Precursor Legacy. And I've started Jack 2. And the only issue so far is a slight audio fault during cutscenes where it sounds crackly. It's very slight, though. Nothing that noticeable. Going for a platinum on Jack 2. Yeah, there's no way I'd go for a platinum. I get bored. So yeah. apparently it runs at 1080 on the PS4. Okay. So I'd assume it runs the same on the PS5. There's no way they'd upscale yeah. it to 4K, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, imagine. Is we are. Uh, we we secretly want this. <laughs> well, now that we've said it, we've put it out to the universe or our phone microphones. Yes, please. it might happen. We have been discussing Jack and Daxter a lot this podcast, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. that's quite uncanny. It, it really is. Siri, well, that's actually okay. We're coming back to an interesting point here. We keep coming back to Naughty Dog and Jack and Daxter. Jack Two was. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's very much inspired by Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. So, yep. So, kind of open, open worldy. 
no, like hub worldy rather PS2 version of open world, if you will. And there's you know the police and you know you get in trouble and all that jazz. Uh, drive to missions, blah 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 blah. But apart from that, Naughty Dog has very much been the like almost the anti open world because. When everyone else was again going for crowds and starting to create larger hubs and you know bigger places to roam around, they were creating the Uncharted series, which is a very, very much linear gameplay. It plays like a movie, you know. Mm. And then The Last of Us as well is, you know, as you know, there's a bit more exploring and you know, a bit more places to go, I guess, if you will, but it's still very much linear style gameplay as well. It's extremely linear. And so I think if, as long as you have companies like that uh, who are still pumping out you know, quality games, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have an issue with everything going the way of open world. Yeah, it's definitely on the rise though. If anything, I feel like it would just push developers to do better with that format. Yeah. You know? And that's that's okay. That's that's arguably a good thing. You know, competition is never bad. It, it promotes better quality stuff for us, the consumers. Mm -hmm. I'm so down. If, if Breath of the Wild 2 is better quality because there's a new Sonic open world game and Genshin Impact and Mortals Phoenix Rising have released, then... Cool. Good. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to make it better. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. When do we think yeah. wide scale availability is going to come to some of these uh, consoles? I have a feeling Dan's looking up how to get a PS5 right now because he wants the PS5 Jack and Daxter collection, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am so right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> I did Google. I was hoping to tell everybody on podcast that they could buy something from somewhere. That's why it was just research. For the yeah, podcast. Just, uh, yeah. Product research, development. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Podcast. Uh, I honestly don't know. I don't think it will be this year. Uh, let's put it that way. I don't want to speculate too much on following years, but we, we might be halfway, three quarters through this generation of consoles before they come widely available. Don't be surprised if that happens is I, all I'm saying. I have heard that scalpers are getting stuck with them now. Good. Well, serves I mean, them. not good, but serves them right. Serves them right, yeah. Bane of the world. Well, maybe they'll have to drop their prices then. Mm, well, that's, would, yeah. that's apparently already started to to happen thus far. So it'll so be should. good to see that in in a bigger fashion. Companies and e-commerce platforms are actually cracking down on that more and more. So you that's so good. actually need to have uh, proof that you're allowed to sell one of these consoles by a authorized licensed distributor otherwise you're yep. not allowed to have it on their platform so clearly the e-commerce platforms are doing more about it yeah yeah uh, good so they should i mean yeah scalpers it's not fair it's not right and it's you know what playstation it well i'm just using the playstation 5 as an example because it was like pretty up there in terms of like scalpers and things you know like playstation is probably quite upset mm, it's yeah. cost them like it would that would have cost them so much money because yeah the scalpers have like bought the consoles but they're unable to sell them on so all of those consoles that could have been in the hands of consumers who are actively buying games yes. it's no longer happening Mm -hmm. And that's where they make their money. Mm -hmm. So but maybe like those companies are putting more pressure on like, how, like why did you let that happen and how can we stop it from happening in the future? Yeah, I hope so. Did you guys hear about that, <laughs> that truck that got robbed on the freeway 
when the PS5 first released. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was full, like, Grand Theft Auto, Need for Speed, like, Fast moving Fast and Furious, truck. I think it was. Fast and Furious, I can yeah, see the man. Honda Civic, uh, the three black Honda Civics. It was a three or four they, uh, scene from Fast and the Furious. Yeah, they legit <laughs> robbed a moving truck for PlayStation 5s. Wow. Great. That's wild, isn't man. it? Isn't it? That's how you know your console is. Sort that after. is a heist. Like yeah. they would have, it would have been like a movie. They all got together yep. and they all had a meeting, and they probably, you know, had their balaclavas sitting down beside them, and they are planning a They're heist. All on Zoom. With blueprints, <laughs> timetables. Yeah, it would have been full. A full like, you know what? Maybe <laughs> next year they'll put out a movie about it. Yeah, forget the Italian job. We go on the Sony PlayStation. The PS5 job. moving truck. I'm ready, guys. Job. Job. I want some Jack and Baxter. <laughs> yeah. Baxter yeah. Truck. yeah. Be willing to rob a moving truck for some Jack, for Jack and Baxter. And Baxter. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd be willing to rob a moving truck, but maybe not deal with the consequences that come after said heist of moving truck. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did they ever get caught? I, I have no idea. I just remember reading about it and thinking, you know what? If they did, it would have been in there. It would have been in the news. That's probably. That's true. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure. I I can't tell you. I hope so. I hope so because they're just PlayStations that go on to scalp being scalped more than likely. But you know, I look. I I I'm in two minds because I support people like investing you know you, like sometimes it's an investment oh i'm gonna buy this second one and then on sell it for like a couple of hundred bucks more because you know i want to make some money and that's how ebay works and that's how free trade works and all that jazz but when people are buying like hundreds yeah even tens mm. you know tens too much and then putting the jacking the price up by well that's the thing it wasn't just a couple hundred dollars more it was Ooh. like like a thousand dollars more yeah man yeah 500 i $500 PlayStations, I think, is the US price. $500 was going for $1,500. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, it, it's a bit too far, isn't it? And people are, like, I mean, people are paying it because they don't have a choice. Well, they're slowing down now. Yeah, good. So they should be, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it just, they, they should be slowing down. It's like when um, we went into lockdown that first time and everybody was buying up toilet paper and then there was that guy who had all this toilet paper and he tried to return it to the supermarket and they were like, nah. No way. Yeah, we don't do return like toilet that. paper. Yeah, absolutely. So they should have as well. Yeah, that's so like that. It was revealed that these types of heists have occurred 27 times this year alone in the United Kingdom. Wow. The moving truck heists. Oh, really? In the, in the, in the well, title, wow. PS5 thieves attempt a Fast and the Furious style heist. Yeah, goddamn straight they did. That's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay. So they're way more common than we thought they were. I, yeah. yeah I thought it was just one. There's 27. Yeah. 27. 27. That's, oh, I guess. I mean, maybe if you're into lipstick, you would hear about the lipstick truck that and that was written over a year move. ago. Okay, yeah. So I'm sure there's more. Yeah, December more 2020. Then. Okay, so in the year of 2020, there was 27 heists. Yeah, these things generally just go up and up. Man, wow. that is insane, isn't it? What a movement! What a movement! <laughs> yeah. the truck heist movement. Of 2020. Hashtag Fast yeah, and the gonna, Furious heist. We're going to have know. to, in the title of this podcast, put truck heists in there. Yeah, you'd have a rush afterwards, wouldn't you? When you oh, yeah, you'd go do. back with your booty and, and you're like, oh. With all your PS5s. Bro, dudes, how was that? Did anybody get any <laughs> games? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Didn't think that through. Let, let's play Jack and Baxter. <laughs> Give me well, that's their up. next heist, isn't it? They're working on it already. Yeah, yeah. The games truck is next, isn't it? That's funny as. You know, we did have a couple more subjects planned for this podcast, but I think we ran out of time talking about moving trucks and such. What do you guys think? How do you guys feel? 
Yeah, well, I think yeah. we, I think we did. We got a bit sidetracked. We'll save okay. our. It, we didn't even touch on our big topic, so no, tune yeah. in next week for our. Yeah, there big has topic. been a big move into non fungible tokens in gaming mm. recently, and it is a big topic, and it will continue to be a big topic. So make sure you tune in next week, where we actually discuss what we were meant to discuss <laughs> i'll research once. more truck heists let's, yes yes let's give out the latest auction price though the highest auction price what was it of nfts so nfts for those that don't know non-fungible token it's essentially again more detail next week but it's essentially just a purchase of a one-of-a-kind digital piece so by digital piece, it might be anything. If anyone remembers the old YouTube video, Charlie bit my finger. I don't know if you've noticed, but that is no longer available anymore on YouTube because it was sold as an NFT. So somebody now owns the original copy of Charlie bit my finger and they can do with it what they will. So there's been a big move into this in gaming. Dan? I'm just... Grabbing the latest price now of the highest. Highest non-fungible token that's been sold within the video game industry or just no, the just Konami. in the uh, Konami one. The Konami's done a 35th anniversary and they've basically just released a bunch of NFTs for people to buy and they're auctioning them off. Mm, Castlevania mm. NFTs. Sorry, it's yes, Castlevania's mm. anniversary, not Konami. I knew I'd say that. <laughs> so Castlevania, Dracula's Castle Pixel Art. Yes. Now, remember, for those listening, this you, you don't actually get anything. Like, oh, you get like the digital copy. Yes. Mm. Mm. Of a digital piece. $506.13 US. US. That is uh, a lot in Australian dollars. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. You know what, Dan? When does the auction finish? I, I'm going to one up you, Dan. Castlevania, Circle of the Moon, main visual art. So you get the JPEG. Mm. That's good. Uh, I actually clicked on this and right click save so that I own it. Um, don't tell anyone though. Oh God, they're going to sue me now, whoever gets it. Yeah, you're going to be sued. I'll delete it. I promise. I'll, I'll delete it. Uh, that currently is going for 950 US dollars, almost a thousand bucks for a digital piece of art digital jpeg art so that's just for some food for thought which for you guys which to think about one thousand three hundred and twenty one australian dollars there you go wow. that's uh that's a lot of money for no nothing physical but again everything is going digital these days it's not just e3 it's not just i digital games it's unique pieces of stuff in this case, are physical games artwork? gonna become the new VHS? Yeah, I think, I think they will. I, I think physical games eventually are on the way they out. Will. It's yeah. just I, the nature of the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but I just don't. I, I, I don't know. I couldn't spend that much money on a JPEG. No, no, nor could I. No, nor could but I uh, look. I I get it if. I, I don't know if it was a copy of, I don't, let's use Jack and Daxter, okay? If you could own Daxter's original render and you'd be the only person in the world to own it. So I guess it gives you the right to sue other people if they're using that original render, then, you know, I, I probably wouldn't spend 1300 bucks on it. But I might be tempted to, you know, I could see how other people would want that. I would have to have a a lot of money before. Yes, I would you'd have to have the money to throw away for sure, for sure. Obviously, well, I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe this nine hundred and fifty US dollars. Maybe this person just really loves Castlevania and they've got a huge Castlevania collection and they spend all their extra money on it. That's fine. Mm. I mean, I'm not judging you. We've all got our vice. Exactly. Some people you. collect okay, stamps. 
Some people spend crazy money on stamps. Well, I don't stamp understand is tangible. that. Tangible. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's a tangible object. Whereas this, you can touch it. Yeah. Yeah, but how long is it going to be before we can all jump into the world of the internet? It'll turn into VR like a headsets. hologram or something. Yeah, and then it, then that picture comes up in a in a in a virtual museum. Probably then, a long time. Let's be honest. Oh, I've been watching too much Futurama. <laughs> yeah. It's <a> JPEG. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah it's just when does JPEG. this auction end? I have no idea. It if doesn't it really is end before day. next week. We I will... would love to return back to the price next week of what well, we will. this went for. Yeah, if, regardless of if it's sold or not, we will go back to it next week. Mm-hmm. We'll either tell you what it's sold at or we'll let you know what it's currently Mm-hmm. It looks like it finishes on the 14th in the cool. US. Okay. So next week we will definitely get back to you guys and let you know what it's at. Who knows, by the time that this podcast is actually released, by the time we hit the stop button, the price might have gone up by another thousand dollars. So, well, when we were looking at it earlier, I thought it was like eight hundred, and now it's nine hundred. There you go. So, well, what I just don't get, and I know we're wrapping things up, but if it was say the rights to the music, mm-hmm. right? I'd be all for that. I'd spend thirteen hundred dollars on that. Yeah, because I think it is though. No, no, no. It's the rights to a JPEG. Yeah, but some of them are music. Yeah, but it's the right. I know that one. We're talking about that one that's $900, $1,300 yeah, okay. Australian. Or the JPEG. That's a JPEG. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's not financially responsible, and they need to have their money taken away. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I'm not against that sentence. Or maybe it's like Elon Musk or something. Yeah, imagine he's just driving the price of Castlevania merch through the roof. He's just like, you know what? I want this. Do you know his first his first Tesla is in space? It is now, is it? Yeah, he launched it. Good into, on him into space for some. Perhaps I can't remember JPEG the reason. Be destined. Yes, for space. maybe the JPEG is destined for space. Who knows? <laughs> and on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. Make sure you join us next week when we go into a bit more detail about NFTs. There is seriously a lot to discuss um, about, you know, consumers and lots of different companies are getting into it. I'm sure there's going to be more info that comes out in this coming week that we will be discussing next week in next week's podcast. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Laura. Where can people find you, Dan? iDigitalGames.com. So just head over to iDigitalGames.com. We are now global, which is really cool. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can purchase a game. If that game is illegal in your country, it will not work. And you will know if it's illegal in your country. So don't don't try and be dodgy. It won't work. (laughs) Nice try, though. I've, I've I've already had somebody try. (laughs) <laughs> oh, nice. Good it's on. worth a try. It is. It's worth a crack. I, yeah. I respect that. Laura, where can people find you? Um, Nature Gamer on Instagram or some kind of gaming on YouTube, or they can find you at some kind of gaming on Instagram, but all of the links will be below, below wherever this podcast the is description displayed below. or YouTube. Mm. Oh, there you go. I did not know that. I post them all in there. Yep. Uh, it's more fun if we talk about it. <laughs> you can find me. I'm always with Laura, be it on Instagram through some kind of gaming, twitch.tv slash some kind of gaming. We stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, Australian time. So I believe Monday is actually Sunday in America. And weekly videos on YouTube as well. Make sure you check out our Hypercon review that is coming out very soon. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for spending some time with us, chatting amongst friends about the video game industry. Thank you so much. We'll all see you next time. Bye. See y'all. Bye.